Hello, this is Sims Art. I'm an illustrator and comic book artist. In this video, I'm going to show how to create artworks using digital watercolors in Clip Studio Paint. We'll see how traditional watercolors works, how to create our watercolor brush starting from the G-Pen tool, and how to set, in the sub tool detail panel, some of the settings necessary for the creation of our custom brush. Watercolors are one of the most classic tools artists use for their creations. In order to use them, we need a brush, some water, watercolor paint, and depending on the final look, watercolor paper. All these tools and methods cannot be copied in digital, but we can translate some of the most iconic signature effects of traditional watercolors into a digital format. That's why I'll refer to this process and tools as digital watercolors and not faux watercolors. In order to start working toward the creation of our watercolor brush, we need to look at what we are going trying to emulate. When we look at traditional watercolor brush strokes, we can easily recognize a series of signature effects. The first one is its irregularity, especially toward the end, in shape. The second is the subtle edge that each brush stroke has. A third effect is how the brush strokes overlap with each other when they dry out. The first one is due to the very nature of the brush, made of bristles. The second one, due to the nature of the way pigments tend to group toward the edges when mixed with water. And the third one is given by the amount of water mixed with the pigments. A fourth one is the paper texture that shows through the brush strokes. So let's try to translate in digital these three elements using Clip Studio Paint Brushes engine. In order to simplify the process, I'll start the creation of this brush, duplicating the default G pen tool. I want to mention that Clip Studio Paint has watercolor brushes by default, but in this video, I want to make one from scratch. This will allow you to edit eventually the brush to find your personal brush settings. You will also find the complete list of settings I'm gonna use in the description of the video. First, let's duplicate the sub tool, renaming it, and this way we will not ruin the original G Pen brush. Now, let's open the sub tool detail, and here we can change the brush size. I will set it to 50 and activate pen pressure, remove the tilt control, and the minimum value of the pen pressure is gonna be 15. I will also activate the random dynamic this way the minimum value is 80 and we will create a little bit of variety okay let's test how this looks so far so this is the brush stroke and as you can see it has a little bit of variety we can change these values as much as we want if we turn off pen pressure for example we will have a one size type of brush or if we turn on pen pressure and turn off random we will have a very smooth brush stroke the second setting is in the ink tab, we will change the opacity dynamics of pen pressure specifically to 25. The reason behind this is that in this way, our pen pressure will change the opacity of the brush stroke and this will give a more natural effect. Let's take a look at what we have so far. So if we create a brush stroke, now with the pen pressure, we can control the transparency of the brush stroke. So the more we press, darker it will get. The lighter, it will make it more transparent. And this will allow, for example, to overlap two brush strokes and see the overlapping right away with just the control of the pen pressure of our pen. Continuing, I will change the blending mode to multiply and activate color mixing set to smear this way we will also make the brush stroke interact easier between each other when we will create different brush strokes smear is very similar to running color the difference is that when we select smear we can also select the blending mode in this case it's gonna be multiply this way, the different brush strokes will interact using the blending mode, but adding a mixing that allows for a more realistic watercolor look. If we use running color instead, we could only use normal as a blending mode, which is the default one, and we should only play with the density of paint, which is something that it's more similar to gouache or oil paint. 
With this setting enabled, we reached the end of this first video. In the next video, we'll keep adding more effects in the Subtool Detail panel to complete our first custom watercolor brush. I hope you find this information useful, and as always, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. See you next time. If you like this video, you can find more about my work on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. See you next time.